I've been kind of excited for this in a way that I don't think it should exist. Hello, good morning. Good morning, BBs. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And did anybody hear anything about a new game? Oh, yesterday? Were there, were there, did anybody, did any of you hear anything about new games? Did anybody, anything at all? No? Mm. Uh, it is... It is Game Fest month. It's it's festering games month. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yes. The what was once e has now turned into uh, an amorphous blob of game month. game game events that are semi related. Uh, hey, I just want to say that was a trick question, and Jelly PB is the uh, one who freaking got it and said, "Nope, I only get my news Monday, Wednesday, and." Friday. Friday. That was the correct answer. Thank you, Jelly. Everyone else, I'll Everyone see you on? after class. That's right. Don't promise that. Oh, because then they'll fun? they'll all want it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. According to my DMs, I can say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, such a huge amount of news between the Summer Games Fest yesterday, between uh, Day of the Devs and some assorted uh, announcements that have been happening in the interim yeah. and, and leaks. Yeah. If you're, hey, uh, shout out to Atlas and our sympathies to you about every single thing you were going to announce later on this month, Persona related. We're sorry that that all came out already, but we are very excited for the Persona 3 remake, so. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony. Before we get into everything that was like in the showcase, because we're gonna go, we're gonna go trailer by trailer, y'all. We're gonna go frame by frame, <laughs> pixel by one. pixel, oh. and we're gonna we're gonna follow the money, and we're gonna tell you exactly what's going on in the conspiracy of the video games industry. Oh, well. Illuminati! <laughs> what did you think? What was your feeling overall? How were you left feeling after we watched it last night? I think. The Summer Games Fest has always been a compliment to E3. Mm -hmm. Without E3, the Summer, the Summer Games Fest kickoff is not the hugest, most exciting thing mm -hmm. because every publisher and every developer has their own event still. Yeah. Because it's not like everybody's just moving over to the Jeff Keighley show because a lot of that is marketing and paid placement. Right. You still get a better value doing your own event if you're sort of a larger publisher. So I think we didn't see a lot of the bigger stuff. There was mm -hmm. some big stuff. Yeah. Um, but overall, I thought it was I thought it was fine. I thought it was a good showcase um as like a big kickoff to everything. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like the big kickoff to everything and that's because we have to understand that Jeff Keighley does not control everything. Yeah. Like E3 was the event. This is Jeff Keighley's event that's pretty big. Yeah. But it's not E3. I agree. I think at the end of it, I was left like, oh, okay. Oh. I can't wait for more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I was left like excited for more showcases, which is a a good kickoff. It's a great place to be. That's a good place to be at the end of it, but also it depends on the kind of gamer that you are at the end of the day. Uh, the games in that showcase aren't exactly like the Sage and Anthony games. No. So I'm sure there are also people that were super freaking excited by this showcase. Yeah, Day um, of the Devs is always better for me than same. any other showcase, but here's what I'll say. How about any other showcase? I mean, most showcases, but here's what I'll say. Um, it was divided into blocks. It felt like, yeah, like we were we were watching, and it's like, oh, it's it's the, it's the bro gamer block. Yeah, like we're gonna see a we're gonna see a racing game. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say they're gonna tell us that Porsches have been around for a very long time. Yeah, and then they're gonna show us a shoot man. Yeah, and then there was like a there was like a cozy block. There was like a um, there was all kinds of different blocks. And there wasn't much of a cozy block. No, but that is still to come because he hearing Jeff Keighley the wholesome say game vest is uh, or the wholesome game showcase is on Sunday. Hearing Jeff Keighley say cozy wrong felt wrong wrong 
felt wrong to me. Incorrect. Yeah, he's every time he said it, he's like, and he said it with that tone that Jeff has where he says, where he's like, when we love a cozy game, and it's like, do we, Jeff? No, we, no, not we. Not we. We. You can say, you can say, oh man, cozy games. Everybody, like, everybody loves a cozy game right now, or people are really into cozy games right now. But when Jeff Keeley says, we, we love, love a cozy, cozy game. game. I think Jeff Keeley uh, sim- understands trends in business, mm-hmm. but does not enjoy a cozy game in the least. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Keeley loves to meet a celebrity, though. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing Jeff Keeley loves more than to meet a celebrity. That was the most on he was all night, for those oh. who don't know. Uh, Nicholas Cage came by Summer Game Fest mm-hmm. um, to talk about himself as himself being in Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Uh, which, hey, Nick Cage did the media training. Nick Cage showed up, you know, um, in a way that, like, I mean, Keanu did, but Keanu was more about just general excitement. Yes. Nick Cage w- had his talking points. Yeah. He knew what to say. He knew what to talk about uh, vis-a-vis the game. Mm-hmm. It was uh, It was very interesting, although they did hold on him a little long during his exit. We noticed this and he did, he did like his turnaround to walk away and like, you could see the moment he turned off <laughs> and started walking his regular way. Uh huh. And you were just like, woof. Okay. Okay. Nick. C. Dandino asked, I'm still wondering, is he a killer or survivor? I wondered the same thing. I believe he's a survivor he from what we could tell in that. He mentioned that he's a survivor and yeah. they showed a little gameplay of him he doing like, puzzles and stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Cause we saw him doing, um, he did the yeah, fuse yeah, box yeah. thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. He is a survivor. And he did talk about when you're a survivor, we are fused. He talked a lot about that. He wanted like, it was, he was weird about it. If he, I'm being honest. Yeah. Cause he's Nick Cage. He's an odd duck. His brand is odd duckery. Um, I think it would have been a hundred times funnier if he was a killer. I think he should have been a killer. I think him being a survivor is actually not funny at all. I think Nicholas, I think it would have been hard. It would have been a hard sell to be like, hey, Nicholas Cage, we want to do this game where you brutally murder people as Nicholas Cage. I get it. Like, I understand why yeah. he wouldn't want to be a killer and why they probably couldn't get approval on but, that. Right. But here's what I'm saying. It would have been hard to do that, but. What if you gave him a character name and he was played by Nick Cage and we all knew he was Nick Cage and yeah. it was like very, you know, Elvisy yeah. or whatever. Nicholas Nage. Nicholas Nage. That's the killer. That's no one would know. I think that would be very funny. I don't I, I know that people love the Nicholas Cage bit. Like I know that people love to jokingly love Nicholas Cage to the point where it's like, is it ironic or not? I don't know anymore. I don't get it. I don't get it. I've never, I had a partner for a very long time that was not ironic. Genuinely loved Nicolas Cage. Okay. I think a lot of people do. Um, be- yeah. Because he's, because he's done so many films mm-hmm. to get out of that tax debt that he was in. Yeah. That there's a Nicolas Cage movie for everyone. Right. Whether if you like big family man comedy, Nicolas Cage, there's a lot of that movie. If you yeah. like action, Nicolas Cage, there was a lot of that for a while. That Now there's like cosmic horror, Nicolas Cage is big right now. And then of course you have the joke of Nicolas Cage. Right. So there's all the different ways you can love Nicolas Cage and I get it. Mm-hmm. See, it, like like Hetty just said, Nick Cage is so good and horrible. I love him. Yeah. I, I hear you. He is a very, very good actor. I think if he had not fallen into the trap of like spending all the money and like- Can you explain the debt story? I don't think everyone knows that. So Nicolas Cage, uh, God, about 20 years ago, I would guess at this point, um, literally spent all his money so quickly when he became a movie star. Like so much movie. Like so much, so much money. movie, so much movie, so much money. Yeah. Spent it all. Literally bought a castle. Our dude bought a castle. He's like big into horror. He bought like a castle in Romania or something. He had like, he used to do these tours of his home and like, it was bonkers. It was cuckoo bonkers. The stuff that he would buy. Um, it was like the equivalent of like when Michael Jackson would buy things like the elephant man's bones or like would uh would build a, a personal amusement park. Like Nick yeah. Cage was doing that shit, but he didn't have Michael that Jackson much money, money, you know? Even Michael Jackson didn't have Michael Jackson money. So Nicolas Cage got into all this debt with the IRS because he also just fucked up his taxes. He wasn't paying attention to money. 
Um, and so for a while, like when you get into IRS debt, a huge amount of it, you have to prove, and the same thing happened to like Wesley Snipes, you have to sort of prove that you are making your best effort to work. Uh -huh. And they, based on how much your income has been, tell you how quickly and how much you have to pay back. Wild and system. And they charge interest the whole time. Wild system. So Nicolas Cage, there was that period where all of a sudden Nicolas Cage went from like prestige actor who was in a couple big movies a year yeah. into the Nicolas Cage that we know now that was in like four movies a year, mm -hmm. which is an insane number of movies to do. And he was he does like four movies a year, and he's done it for like the last twenty years, um, and so that's the debt thing, and that's why Nicolas Cage is as prolific as he is. And you sometimes like you used to see movies and be like, why is Nick Cage in that? And it's like, oh, because he, he has to. to. <laughs> he does like one a year that he wants to be in, and yeah. then three are for the government. All right, <laughs> for the government. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say we're very pro rich people paying their taxes. Yes. We're strongly in favor of taxing the rich. We're anti IRS. We are anti IRS. And it's complicated. We're anti the way the American tax system works. Very pro taxing the rich. Mm -hmm. But I think people are right where they're like, Nicolas Cage is really good and bad. Mm -hmm. I think Nicolas Cage is an extremely good actor and a, an extremely self aware person that understands when it's time to be bad. Yeah. He goes into a movie and he's like, this is for bad Nicolas Cage. And he plays it and he still acts it, but he's he acts it with a layer of meta. Interesting. When he does a good movie, like he's a good actor. And when he loves a movie, whether it's good or not, he's a good actor. Like remember, remember when we watched Mandy for the first time? We, I didn't watch Mandy. You didn't watch Mandy? Mm -mm. Do you remember watching Mandy for the first time? Never seen it. You've never seen Mandy? Never seen Mandy. I remember everyone talking about it when we watched the Not Five Nights at Freddy's one. Mm, you gotta watch Mandy. I've probably seen like two Nicolas Cage movies. You got I don't see the appeal. I find, can I be honest? Yeah. Is, and I might be crucified on the internet for this. I find Nicolas Cage off-putting. No, that's fine. Okay. You're allowed to. Okay. Part of the thing is that he's off-putting. Right, so that's the thing. And uh, somebody referenced the episode of Community where Abed is trying to figure out if he's a good actor or not. Mm -hmm. And I think what Abed and I might have in common is autism. So I think it might be, I fundamentally cannot understand the joke. <laughs> <laughs> right, the layers of meta that I he's doing. I actually think I can't get it. I actually think it's not within me. You can intellectually understand the joke, but you cannot internalize it and accept Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Why do that? Yeah. Because your brain is saying, why do that? Why do that? Like cats I get. Yeah. Cats I get. It's really straightforward what the bit is mm -hmm. with cats. I'll tell you this, especially early Nicolas Cage, like people brought up, somebody brought up like Raising Arizona, like really yeah. early Nicolas Cage, like Moonstruck, things like that, where he was like doing his acting thing. Yeah. Where he's like, I'm sort of like, like I'm related to the, Co the Coppolas. I'm gonna get cast in stuff. I mm -hmm. wanna be an actor, but I'm probably just gonna be a weird character actor my whole life. Yeah. And I'll just kind of like, I use my family's name to get in a little bit, but I'm good and I'm just gonna kind of stay here. Okay. And then he blew up. The movies like before he blew up, he was like, he's such a good actor. He's such a good actor. And there are movies that he does these days where I'm like, you are such a good actor. Fascinating. Um, but anyway, Dead by Daylight, Nicholas Cage. While we're is talking about it, we might as well uh, show a little bit of the footage. The footage is weird. Um, so here's it the thing. It doesn't look right. We love Dead by Daylight in this house. I love this game. Um, Stylistically, the, his face scan doesn't match his up. His face scan's not very good. And look, the animation on the survivor, like the animation on the character models is not excellent on Dead by Daylight. That's not like what this game is loved for. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not for like, Wow, they move so realistically. I mean, even that art, when you look at that art, it's like, that's uncanny. not Nicolas Cage. No, that's uncanny. That's definitely uncanny because it's supposed to be a real person. But like the way that like survivors' heads don't move. Yeah. Is very funny. And then like, you can tell for this shot, they spent a little more time animating his face than it'll really look like when you're playing it. Uh-huh. Um, and it's too, it's like almost too detailed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's on that edge where it's not cartoony and it's not realistic. Therefore, uncanny. Yeah, it's it. It was odd, and he clearly did. He clearly did uh, all the voice work, and he talked a lot about doing the voice work. Uh huh. But he did not do any facial cap or mocap. Yeah, like you can tell. Um, this is the scene that you can tell it in when he runs by this killer and then runs forward. <laughs> and like that's always how survivors move in Dead by Daylight. And when it is these, like I don't know, you only know them from this game. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. But seeing like a half Nicolas Cage do it. 
Uh, and it's not the first like actor's face that they've put in here. It's the first time they've been playing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what I mean? You had like the Stranger Things, uh, like older kids. Yeah. You have like various char like characters that have popped up that are people. It's just, it. I don't know. The Nick Cage of it is this weird. One's, this one's particularly off-putting. It's interesting in the, um, in his talk, like when he was talking to Keeley, he mentioned like when Keeley said, why dead by daylight or, or you know, why now? Um, he said that there's a member of his family that's very into Dead by Daylight, and he became acquainted with the game through them, and he saw that some of his favorite horror characters were in there, including Sadako. Like, he was very excited that Sadako yeah. was in it. Um, but the other thing he slipped in, and I don't know if you noticed this, mm. he slipped in, he's never been asked before. He said that. He's like, and you know, no one's ever asked me to come into this world before and, and, and kind of play in this world. No way. He said that. Yeah. He literally put out to the world, and he made it very subtle, but he put out to the world, you could have had me in your game. I would have done it. No way. Dead by Daylight asked first. No way. Yeah. Yeah. How interesting. Interesting. Uh, um, anyway, that's the Nick Cage of it all at uh, Summer Games Fest. But I want to talk about uh, some, you know, some of the other stuff. We'll go kind of in order here. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first thing that they kicked it off with was very interesting. It was Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Yeah. Uh, this is a 2.5D side scroller that's kind of a mix of the old Prince of Persia's. You know what it's like? It's like when they released Prince of Persia on the Xbox Live Arcade mm -hmm. or some of the DS games they did for Prince of Persia that are like 2D. Yeah. Um, kind of interesting. Uh, did not do especially well with the audience. Um, it has a very interesting like to dislike ratio on YouTube. The buzz of it is very interesting. People want wanted more from Prince of Persia yeah. if they were Prince of Persia fans. Mm -hmm. And if they weren't Prince of Persia fans, they just literally didn't care at all. Um, here's what I'll say. It looks pretty good, I think, but it does look a little, it's double A. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. This is not a triple A game. Ubisoft has their own showcase going on this weekend. This is uh, this is something they're like, we're gonna give this to Keeley because this means we get to kick off the Summer Games Fest. Right. We're the first thing that people will see and it's a new Prince of Persia, so it has a little prestige. We're gonna trade mm -hmm. that credit for placement and then we'll have our own showcase later on in the weekend where we'll do the bigger, bigger stuff. Yeah. Um, it could go either way for me. I think it looks interesting. I think if this game comes out at $30, mm -hmm. it's a no brainer for me. Okay. If this game comes out at full price, it's a tough sell for me because it does look like a side project. It does look like a side project. And I did, I am one of those people that wanted a full Prince of Persia a game. A full brand yeah. new Prince of Persia. Uh, though I do, listen, we have not made any secret of the fact that we think that Ubisoft games feel pretty slow and bloated at this point. Yeah. Like they're overstuffed. They're not incredibly fun. They're, mm -hmm. they're all trying to be 70 hours of your life. I like that they're doing something that's a little simpler, a little more action packed. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, the fact that they're being a little flexible with that mm -hmm. is happy for me. Yeah, the comments are pissed on YouTube. They're extremely uh, pissed. The first comment is, I don't think they could ever find any music that fits less into the franchise if they tried. I'm impressed. Uh, the music definitely doesn't sound like classically Prince of Persia, but I will say, classically, uh, Prince of Persia was made by also, there was a lot of white people involved. Well, that's the other thing, is this the first Prince of Persia game that has that stars people that are indigenous to the region of the game. That makes sense to be there. Uh, this is the first Persian prince, mm -hmm. so like they don't want to just do like a sitar and you know what I mean and right. call it a day. Uh, but it did feel like placeholder music a little bit to me. It did not okay. feel like the main theme of the new series. Yeah, we've got a lot of where's the remake that we've been waiting for. We waited 13 years for this. I cannot hate this trailer viciously enough. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, now we understand Diablo fans when Diablo Immortal was announced. 
So I, here's what I think. I think if the Prince of Persia series had still been going, uh -huh. if, we had, if we had had in the last few years a big Prince of Persia game, yeah. this would have been received the same way like your Assassin's Creed side stories and mobile games are. Sure. Where people have been like, this looks cool, can't wait to pick it up. Absolutely. But, but because this is the first Prince of Persia game in 13 years. It's what they said, we waited 13 years for this. Yeah. Without any announce of, hey, then a full game is coming. Yes. If they were like, hey, we can give you this for now, a full game is coming. There wasn't even a... Nothing. There wasn't even a like, well, we got a little bit more for you at Ubisoft Connect or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't even anything like that. And I think there should have been tacked on to the end of the, of the trailer. There mm -hmm. should have been like a, um, hey, there might be more coming. If yeah. there is more coming. I'd like I don't to, think there is. I don't think there is. I don't think there's a big AAA Prince of Persia game coming. I think they would have hinted at it if they had said that. I think this is one of those. This is one of those corporate things where it's like, the IP is strong. We'll mm -hmm. see how strong. Release a little game with it. Yeah. And if people buy it and they're really, really into it, yeah. we'll let you do a AAA one. Right. But the problem with that is they always half-ass that smaller game. Yep. And, and then, then they're like, well, no one bought it. No one bought it. Nobody wanted it. They didn't like it. Did so. we not want it, or did we not want that version of it? Which, Did by we the not way, get what we wanted. I'll say, mm -hmm. I still kind of like the look of that version of it. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. like a little game. Uh, next up was Mortal Kombat One. We got a ton of gameplay footage from Mortal Kombat One. So much, S genuinely, S maybe too much. For people who are excited about it, we got uh, we got Van Dam as Johnny Cage for the first time. Uh, we got the new look at the new universe. This is a new timeline. It's called Mortal Kombat One because there it's a new timeline and a different. I told Sage that the worst thing that's gonna happen over the next five years comes from the fact that my mom understands what a multiverse is. Yeah. I love a multiverse. Not everything has to be a multiverse, but everything is a multiverse. And that's where we're at. They showed off a lot of the tag team fighting in Mortal Kombat 1. That was a big highlight of this gameplay. Which it's called the cameo system. And it's essentially like, they were really, he, Ed, Ed Boon, and Keeley were talking a lot about the cameo system, about like how new and fresh and everything it was. And this is not, this is not a slam. I understand why you can't bring this up, why you can't say this directly, but it's calling in, it's calling in assists in, in Marvel Capcom. That's, that's basically what it is. Yeah. You have a couple characters, they have like these little meters, they charge up, when the meter charges up, you can call them in to do assist moves. Yeah, like most other fighting games. Yeah. Um, but it's cool that it's in there. Yeah. Uh, they spent a lot of time talking about it as though it had never been done before, which was weird. That was kind of funny. Um, seeing the, seeing this character animation and the way this game looks the week after Street Fighter VI came out, mm -hmm. yeah. I hope there's, a, I hope there's like one more polish run going, maybe an effects run going in. Okay. It has that traditional, a little stiff sort of Mortal Kombat motion to me. Um, but I think, you know, if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks like, as soon as we played it, chat was like, yeah, it looks like a Mortal Kombat. And it is. Yeah. It is one metric Mortal Kombat. And that's why they call it Mortal Kombat 1. You yeah. get exactly one Mortal Kombat. <laughs> exactly one Mortal Kombat. We're not gonna spend as long on it as the... Um... Uh, early, early access happens on September 14th. Uh, I guess that's Ed Boon's birthday gift to me. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't know, Ed. Uh, PlayStation VR showed off more of Crossfire Sierra Squad. Uh, it's also coming to Steam. If you wanted guns in VR, this is it. If you wanted your standard military shooter in VR, this is it. Yeah. Uh, it's not for me. Nope. But I will say it looks like a pretty advanced VR first-person shooter. Uh, I do say the same thing that I said uh, uh, during the PlayStation showcase, which is... This looks like, this looks like instant nausea. Yeah. This looks like instant nausea for most people. Already, honestly. This is this is the you, you remember how you're talking about like why does the camera tilt all the time? Why is it always a little bit Just crooked? A little it's driving crooked. me nuts. When you aim down the sights, it tilts your why? worldview. Why? Why is it doing that? I don't get it. Or if if the player's doing it, they needed to tell the player to stop doing that. With the whole that. trailer. I know. They need to tell There's the player. There's no way. Stop it doing it. It must be the game or they would have reshot it. There's um, no fucking way. So there's that. Uh, Genuinely, I agree. Wasted Bandwidth said an actual torture device. Yeah. It, it's so disorienting. It's very disorienting. Hey, 
but they followed it up with a real cutie cute. Yeah. This was real cutie. Ah. Oh my God. Stop it. Sonic, please. Mute your yeah. laptop for things. Let's head back over here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Real Apologies. cutie cutie. <laughs> it came in a little hot. Um, Very cute. And you can't you can't see it, but it's fine. He it's goes okay. from he goes from old to new, and we'll you'll see, see you'll see more of it. Yeah, there you go. Now this looks really good to me, actually. Yeah, same. This is what they should have done with Sonic Four, but they wanted to only spend thirty dollars on Sonic Four. Yeah, not charge not, you thirty dollars. No, 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 no. Spend. spend. They spent thirty dollars developing Sonic Sonic Episode Four or whatever. <laughs> This looks really good. Um, so cute. Love the character switches. They showed off the way they did it. Yeah. Very cute. Love Chonky Sonic. Love that it's co-op. Uh, Love that it's like shared screen co-op. Yeah. We're going to co-op this. Yeah, we are. Uh, it looks really good. Love the art style changes for different levels and things like that. This looks really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Now, I do wonder if... This is because Christian Whitehead basically said that they would not come back for a Sonic Mania 2. Mm -hmm. And internally, we heard that Sonic Team was very mad about the success of Sonic Mania, actually, mm -hmm. because it was literally the most loved Sonic game of the last probably 15 years. Yeah. And Sonic Team didn't make it. Um, so, very interesting. Oh, oh. At the end, little... Here comes our Game Gear boy. That looks super fun. It looks great. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think, I think this is fun. I think having smaller 2D Sonic games coexisting with whatever large wackadoo thing, in yeah. all honesty, because all, all of the big budget 3D Sonic games are wackadoo. Oh, They're yeah. They're absolutely bonkers cuckoo. They are wildly silly. Yeah. Like, what is going, like, everyone's, they're clones and people are dying in each other's arms. And yeah. Interspecies makeouts. Yeah. And a, a giant virus is eating people. And We've like, talked about this a lot of times. Uh, Nintendo is so protective over Mario. Mm -hmm. That's their IP. Like, you know, you have like the character that you associate with most game companies. Sega's is Sonic, right? For, yeah. For most people. Uh, the, the character that you associate with Sonic. Sega does not feel the same way about Sonic that Nintendo does about Mario in the slightest. Sonic can be anywhere and could do anything, and there are no rules about what can be in a Sonic game and what game Sonic can be in. Uh, other than when he's doing his own game, uh -huh. gotta be real serious. Yeah. <laughs> gotta be real serious. He's gonna, f he's gonna fight a guy named Eggman, and it's gonna be real serious. And that's serious. a very serious thing. Um, it's pretty weird. Yeah. Uh, so I like that there's also going to be like small Sonic. It's interesting. I, I was reading a thing about the history of Sega cause that's what I do in my spare time. Yeah, you do. And, uh, one of the things about Sega Sammy Holdings and the idea of Sega's parent company is that they don't see Sonic as a video game character and they don't see the video game part of Sonic mm -hmm. as the important part of Sonic. Yeah. They called Sonic like Sonic is important as an inspiration to children. They love the idea of Sonic and the games are secondary. Mm. And that's why Sonic shows up in everything. Interesting. Uh, Cause the Sonic games actually don't, cause remember that Sega Sammy uh, is mostly a pachinko and gambling company <laughs> yeah. that uses the name Sega in front of Sammy. So they seem like a more family friendly company. Yeah. Uh, it actually got a lot of pressure from the Japanese government off of them about things like taxes and gambling. Because they're like, we're just a family-friendly gaming company. Uh, the Sammy part of Sega Sammy makes like 85% of the profits. Mm -hmm. So they they literally don't give a shit. It's so funny. <laughs> um, in other things that maybe shouldn't be this serious, Lies of P was the next trailer that we got. Now, I've been kind of excited for this in a way that I don't think it should exist. I go back and forth on it. Sometimes I'm like, I really want to play this. And then sometimes I'm like, don't do this. I agree. So I do want to play this and I think they shouldn't have done it. Yeah. At I the think same time. It's I'm not wonderful. going back and forth. Those are simultaneous for me. It's wonderful and I'm going to play it and they should not have made it. Yeah. 
this is very strange. Obviously, the the choice of name is always going to be strange to me. I was really hoping when they first announced it that Lies of P was like a working title, mm -hmm. a placeholder title. No, they did stick with Lies of P. This is, of course, the um, Pinocchio, the like grim, dark steampunk, steampunk, plague, death. Yeah, Pinocchio. Uh, that that steam opening. Steampunk, steam Pinocchio. Steam Pinocchio is what they should have called it. Uh, they, it was right there. They started this trailer with the blue fairy like landing on Pinocchio and being like, Pinocchio, we need you to save this world. And it's like, okay. Okay. It's got like the old school French music. Yeah. I was talking I about turned that. on the captions for singing in French. Yeah, that nineteen that nineteen thirties phonograph music, and it's very like Bioshocky, um, very bloodborne-y. And like some of this looks really cool. The reason why I am excited about this is because Bloodboard is Bloodborne is like 720p at 12 frames a second. Uh-huh. And I just want them to give me a nice, a nice crisp, fancy, fast moving Bloodborne. And this looks like what I'm gonna get. And so I'm into yeah. it. Yeah. I we, like the umbrella. We love an we love an umbrella. We love a shark. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Of any variety. That one happens to be a submarine. Um, It looks really good. And there's a demo out now. That was the big thing about this trailer. It's like, go get the demo. Because I think a lot of people are, are are feeling the same way we are, which is like, do I like this? Yeah, right? Do I like this? Is and the demo like, out? Yes. Demo was released that day. Oh, that's day. right. Yeah. yeah. I forgot. Very strange. Very weird. I don't Very know weird. why anyone did that. I don't know who woke up one morning and was like, I've got it. They definitely had that voice, though. Yeah. I've I ha I have an idea. I've got it. I will make a videoed game. Of the Pinocchio. Somebody watched Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and went, not far enough. I guess I'm just Not like, far enough. Why are we going so hard into Pinocchio right now? There's been like three Pinocchio movies. There's a Pinocchio video game. Pinocchio's been in public domain, right? Or did Pinocchio just yeah. go public? No, Pinocchio's domain? been in the public right, been domain. Been there. So yeah. why are we all doing this? Like, I get why everyone's doing Winnie the Pooh. Just went into public domain. I get why everybody immediately responded with that, and why yeah. there was an influx of Winnie the Pooh content. Yeah, and that. Yeah, and that's yes. But the ninety percent of it that I've seen so far in games has just been Disney dunking. Yeah, which fine, do your, great, do your thing, but. Why Pinocchio? Why is Pinocchio having such a moment? Can anyone explain that to me? Pinocchio moment. Nobody knows. I was under the impression that it was because Pinocchio was still owned by Disney and it only just became free game. No, I anybody can use Pinocchio. That's why there was a weird Pinocchio movie like a few years back. It, it just can't, you can't use, uh, the, the cricket's name can't be Jiminy because that's not real. That Jiminy Cricket is like, the story has been a public domain work in the U.S. since 1940. Which is when Disney made their film. Yeah. A couple of years later. It's entirely, there's, the only thing you can't use is you can't use like Cleo the Goldfish. Yeah, you can't use stuff from the Disney movie. Yeah, you can't, you know, they you can't. use stuff from the fairy tale, you yeah. know. And, the, and a lot of Disney stuff has been public domain stuff and always has been public domain stuff. Yeah, Disney didn't stuff. own Pinocchio. And, like, they didn't come up with Pinocchio in the first place. They're, yeah, they didn't, there's no, Pinocchio isn't them. Sleeping Beauty isn't them. Snow White isn't them. None of that stuff is them. None of it. Um, Rapunzel. Pretty much none of the Disney princesses. Yeah, that's that's all standard stuff. Yeah. Um, now, uh, listen, the Pinocchio, the boy, the game with the Chalamet Pinocchio Looks fine, and we'll. I'll play the demo. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I want to know. For sure. The most important thing of the entire world happened immediately after. Yeah, of the entire world. Of the entire world happened immediately after, and that is Alan Wake Two world premiere gameplay footage. There's, it's. It looks so good. We found out that you are playing equally as the two characters. Uh, this is Saga. I believe her name is Saga Anderson. And uh, she is an FBI uh, agent that has been brought to Bl uh, to Bright Falls mm -hmm. to look after a string of uh, strange killings and uh, finds out they are connected to the disappearance of a writer. Uh, and then, of course, the other 50% of the game, you play as Alan Wake, who is trying to get out of the nightmare dimension. Uh, one of the things that I love is Saga's partner mm -hmm. is played by Sam Lake. 
He has yeah. like a major role in the game, which I love. I always love when Sam shows up mm -hmm. in his own games. Um, it looks really good. Uh, Life Serial says apparently Saga gets name dropped in Quantum Break. Yes. Uh, yes, she does. Alan gets name dropped in Qu in uh, in uh, uh, Control. 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 Yeah, okay. They're that all connected. Control. Yeah. They're all connected. Uh, yeah, this was fun gameplay footage. Uh, it starts out a little bit slow because they're just showing you the world. And mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing that Sam said that was interesting is this will be. <gasps> Watch out! That deer's got a knife. Um, Sam said that this will be Remedy's first survival horror game. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, and you can see here that a lot of the stuff from the first one comes back. Like, this is a person, according to Sam, that has been killed and has come back as a nightmare. Cool. Um, you can't see in the corner. Successfully but freaky. Yeah. But in the corner there, we have, uh, you are using a flare gun. You do have batteries. Mm -hmm. It looks like the batteries are used for the flare gun, not your uh, not your flashlight this yeah, time. Yeah, the batteries do not seem like there is a big of a character in this one. Yeah, there's not a single Verizon billboard, and Which I think strange. I think there should be at least one Verizon billboard to honor. Yeah, the game to honor what came Alan before. Wake. Yeah, one Duracell thing. Yeah, uh, and it's cool. Like what we find out at the end here is there's like a human heart in a cooler, and Son and Saga dreamed that it would be there. Yeah, uh, and then Alan Wake too. Wee -oo, wee -oo. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. I love Remedy stuff. It makes me so happy. It's coming out on October 17th, and it's going to be digital only. Um, and Remedy said, like, look, you know, a lot of players have shifted to digital only. Mm -hmm. You buy a PlayStation 5 without a disk drive. Uh, the Xbox Series S is digital only. Um, you know, and not releasing on a disk helps us keep the price of the game at $59.99 on console and $49.99 on PC when other people's games are becoming $70 or $80. I'm for it. I am somebody that like, I do believe that physical copies of games mm -hmm. are important for uh, you know preservation yeah. and things like that. But also like, I don't buy physical games. No. <laughs> I let somebody else worry about preservation. Right. <laughs> I don't need all those boxes and discs and shit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm into it. Um. I'm a, we're a little bit out of order at this point because that list that you had in front of you doesn't have everything. It is a, a the the best of list. Oh, it's it's nothing. Uh, it, it's none of the paid placement stuff. It's just the announcement trailer stuff. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the other huge pieces of news that we got was uh, Spider Man 2's release date. We didn't get a trailer or anything for that. We just got like a little. Yeah. Hey, by the way, no shade to anybody who buys physical games. Just not. Yeah. You know. Uh, Spider-Man 2 is coming uh, October 17th. There was some- uh, Or 20th. Separate, yeah, 20th. Um, which is very exciting. We're very excited for Spider-Man. Yeah, they, we saw some art was, of, uh, some additional key art of Venom, which yeah. was cool, but they didn't, and, we, and then they released the box art, which is uh, Peter and Miles together yeah. on the red background. It's cool, but it was clearly like, uh, Sony's got its own thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll give you a little- We'll give you a little- We'll give you a little, nung, 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 Jeff. We'll give you one little bit. Um, the Final Fantasy mobile game, they showed off Ever Crisis. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty exciting. Um, we got John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. Yeah, we did. Uh, John Carpenter, if you are unfamiliar, uh, legendary horror director John Carpenter um, has said that he doesn't make as many movies anymore because he'd just rather sit at home and play his Xbox because studios suck to work with and video games rule. That's why I don't make movies either. And uh, so he released, somebody finally called him up and said, well, why don't we make a video game together, John? And he was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could make one. I could make a, I could make a video game? Yeah. Uh, and so this is a very John Carpenter thing. Here we have this mismatched squad of, of, of misfits yeah. going into uh, a, a, the Pacific Northwest filled with zombies. I am totally with Blade of Creation on this. I'm over zombie stuff, but this was a fun trailer. Yes. This first half of the trailer, I was like, okay, you've got me watching it because of the John Carpenter of it all. Yeah, 100%. But when they show the actual gameplay here, and it's like this wild mix of 
squad-based first-person shooter and just driving vehicles and mowing down hundreds of zombies at a time, this seems fun as hell. This seems very fun. And I used to be a zombie hordes girly. Yeah. Like, I used to play the shit out of zombie horde games. And I just... I don't have a lot of interest in them anymore. No, they, it was done so much. It was way overdone, but I mean, this looks fun. This looks fun as hell. I want to do this. And the different vehicles and like, yeah, you know, Back for Blood didn't really hit with a lot of people. It did all yeah. right for the first couple months and then it, it fell off starkly. I didn't play Back for Blood. I just yeah. was like, I don't really care. Yeah, a lot of people were like that. And I think they're trying to sort of like, you know, and obviously Redfall just tanked. So I think people are looking for something that has that sort of, let's just multiplayer fuck up a monster. Yeah. You know, multiplayer shoot, shoot, bang, bang, fuck up a monster. Yeah. Uh, we got the Like a Dragon Gaiden trailer. Oh, <gasps> This was one of the best trailers in the showcase for sure. Oh, I love a Yakuza game. Mm -hmm. I love Like a Dragon. I love everything they're doing. Um, and the, the big thing is at the end of this, Kiryu, Kiryu, when they ask his name, they're like, what's your name? He goes, a girl has no name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I don't have one. And it's like a big reveal. Like this guy owns this like weird, like Edo Here period, like and theme park, name? this crime lord. I have no name. <laughs> the man who erased his name. I can't, bow, bow, bow. I can't fucking wait, dog. I can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Looked great. Looked very good. Oh, you were into this one, and this one you gotta play. Me out. You've got to play the Yakuza games. Yeah. You've got to at least play Like a Dragon. Okay. You've got to. Uh, this one, Anthony was really into and made me uh, very squeamish. This one is Under the Waves. Uh, this is beautiful. What you, uh, what you can't hear here, because, of course, we're doing our best to not uh, get this video taken down yeah. or muted. Uh, is, While we're looking at Zazu there. Yeah, here's this guy who is... Uh, some sort of underwater explorer scientist who's been living on a submarine with an AI for the last three and a half years yeah. in isolation and starts finding stranger and stranger stuff in the ocean. This is exactly my shit. Yeah. This is 100% my shit. I appreciate that everybody's like, so Life Aquatic, the video game. <laughs> Life Aquatic didn't have AI. It didn't have AI. The red hat. Unfortunately, the red hat is not a Steve Zissou thing. It's a Jacques Cousteau thing. Come on. Yeah, but now, now, but it's, now a it's a Zissou, Zissou thing. thing. But it, you know, he's alone. Uh, this feels to me more like a um, almost. If you're gonna liken it to a movie, it's got the vibe of Moon. Mm. You know, a uh, person on his own uh, with an AI. Like, what's he seeing? Weirder and weird stuff, like a kid's room and a truck. Yeah, like there's like there might be a whole town down there. Uh, the deep ocean makes me deeply uncomfortable. So yeah. it won't be for me. It's rated uh, no for thassalophobia. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks cool. I do agree that like, if I wasn't somebody who uh, was made so squeamish by the deep ocean, I think I would enjoy it very much. Yeah. Uh, I love the concept of the deep horrors, which is why I personally lean towards like cosmic horror instead. Space doesn't scare me in the same way for it some should. reason. Um, it absolutely should. Uh, the ocean is a much more, um, Every day, yeah. <laughs> fear that I have to live with. Yeah, like, you're more likely to get thrown into the ocean than the space. Right. <laughs> like, I don't think space is less scary, but I do think that um, space is going to be less of a problem I'm for me personally. I'm gonna build a catapult and launch you into space. <laughs> Fucking do it, coward. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna build a big old trebuchet and launch you into space. <laughs> do it, you won't. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you wait. Yeah, I'm you waiting. Wait, you wait I'm waiting see. right now. You'll get, we'll see who's scared when you're in space. Yeah, yeah we will. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just feel like the ocean is something that's much more of an everyday or a much more likely experience for me. You know that TikTok sound where uh, people describe all their childhood fears and they go, this is going to be a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. When people are like, <laughs> me thinking about quicksand as a child. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be a problem, isn't it? That's me with the ocean. <laughs> um, you, just, you just wait until space. 
You just, just fucking wait. wait until space. Uh, how about Sandland? Sandland. Uh, this was, they were like, I can't wait to announce this. It's from a, a classic manga, from a classic creator that everybody knows. And I was like, what the fuck is this? You see the, uh, you see the vehicle. Yeah. And you go, this is Toriyama. And then we're like, Dragon Ball? It can't be Dragon Ball. There have been a hundred Dragon Ball games. They made a big deal of the fact that this game was de developed entirely in Unreal 5. Uh-huh. Right before they showed this trailer. And here's what I'm going to tell you. That character did not need to be made in Unreal 5. <laughs> that, that character model, this texturing, did not need to be in Unreal 5. Now, there might be something about the lighting in the world that we're not mm -hmm. seeing yet, but... Um, this looked cute as hell. It looks cute. I'm into this. This but, looked fun. But to uh, to announce it as like a... To, to put the Unreal 5 thing at the top like it's a technological marvel, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have done that. I would have just I would have just said like you know, classic manga, classic artist. Yeah, this is going to be legendary. I wouldn't. Have, I don't care. I wouldn't have leaned into tech. No, I it's it's great. I just it put that thing yeah, in my head. I get it. Where the whole time I was looking, looking at you it, in a little mech suit. I know you get a little looking mech suit, it, and it's a very rounded little mech suit. Mm -hmm. Very cute. It's very cute. Uh, I want to play this real bad. Yeah. Uh, this was actually one of the trailers that most made me want to play. There are the trailers that excite me the most, and there's the most like, ooh, gimme. You know? Mm -hmm. Ooh, let me play that. Ooh, I'll take I'll take ooh. one of those. Yeah, let me play that right now. Give me one of those. Ooh, okay. Uh, and that was definitely up there for me. Yeah. Um, it's, I never, I was not familiar with the manga for Sandland. Mm -hmm. Is it also called Sandland? It must I be. don't know. I would assume it must be. Yeah, probably. But I'm not, I'm not a manga expert, I'll be honest. Uh, Erdi Cooper is saying Sandland was the first thing I read in Japanese, so it has a special place in my oh, heart. Oh, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, they've never made, I don't think they've made an, an anime of it yet. Uh, Peter Luce says they think a movie's coming out. Interesting. But I think they're trying to build this up to be the next big thing. And That's this great. Game is part I hope it. it is. The characters are cute as hell. Uh, we didn't get any kind of release date for it. We just got stay tuned. We just saw that it's coming to mm -hmm. like pretty much all platforms, uh, except for Switch. Uh, do, do you have that Don't Nod game? What's it called? Banishers. Yes. The ghost game. Yes, I do. Because I do want to. I do want to chat about that. There were so many games in here in the in the showcase. Here's mm -hmm. what I'll say: between the advertisements that were peppered in, mm -hmm. and some of the, like the A B like the B C tier announcements, so many games. Just we were watching it. We were like, this just looks like a video game. This is one video game. I can't have another video game. I can't have another fantasy squad based like. Game as a service. Yeah. Uh, but this is, of course, from the Life is Strange developers. And this is about you are um, your ghost, your ghost banishers. But the thing is, you are not supposed to, you're not necessarily a combat first mm -hmm. sort of ghostbuster, though combat is obviously a huge part of the game. The idea is that you're supposed to help ghosts finish their business. Mm -hmm. You fight them if you have to but you want to help ghosts find peace. Now, when you explain the concept to me, it sounds like a game that I'm going to be really excited about. Right. And unfortunately, in watching the gameplay trailer, it didn't have that effect on me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. It doesn't look like that being the story affects the actual gameplay that much. You no. know what I mean? No, most of the gameplay we're seeing is is very soulsy, like yeah. just, just murder some people. Yeah. I do like the idea of, of, you know, the ghost hunter and his friend is also ghost. Very cute. I think yeah. the characters were lovely. The story does seem fun. Uh, Retro Kid said, so they doing Danny Phantom stuff or not? Let's get that Danny Phantom no. up in there. Danny Phantom. He was just 14. <laughs> let's, get some, let's get some animated Butch Hartman moms in the chat. Um, here's what I want to know. Yeah. Why are we not still doing Danny Phantom? How has there not been a Danny Phantom reboot? How has that not been one of the IPs that's been picked back up for anything? It's the Butch Hartman of it all. Yeah. Yeah, I think Butch, I think it's because Butch Hartman probably has partial ownership. Yeah. And he is wackier than a Sonic game, that guy. Do you remember when he tried to start his own uh his own television network for family friendly entertainment that was uh just for Christians? I didn't. Know he put that. it on Kickstarter and he raised like twenty thousand dollars. Thought no, he was starting I had a TV no network. Idea. Yeah, he's a weird um, guy. But he also owns the rights to. Uh, he's also Fairly Odd Parents. Yep. And they've been rebooting and rebooting and rebooting Fairly Odd Parents. Nickelodeon probably owns that entirely. 
I wonder then what the difference is because Danny Phantom was also Nickelodeon. I don't know. I'm very curious. I don't know. Maybe it's also not as big of a deal to anyone who didn't, uh, isn't my exact age and grew up to be goth, mm -hmm. you know? But like a bisexual goth in particular, I think it only matters to people that are exactly approximately 27, exactly approximately yeah. 27 years old and grew up to be bisexual goths. Uh, Erdie Cooper back again in the live studio offense, uh, 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 audience saying trans kids said that they related to Danny Phantom and Butch Hartman got pissed. Oh, fuck that. Um, well, I can't believe I'm saying I hope a big company owns the rights to something, but I do hope Nickelodeon then yeah. has the rights to it and can take it. Well, uh, we saw like we saw some Warzone. If you're into if you're into Call of Duty, we saw that. <laughs> We're not gonna show that. That's great. We don't care. Um, I'm sorry. Annapurna Interactive uh, made their big announcement and their, uh, on Jeff Keighley's showcase, and their big announcement was they're doing their own showcase. It was very funny. Mwah, chef's kiss. Perfect. We got a little like a uh, super cut of moments from their trailers to be mm. like, here's what to come when you come and watch ours. Uh, Quantic Dream said that they're gonna do uh, an indie label called Spotlight, which mm -hmm. is very exciting, uh, and probably is trying to get them to, uh, trying to get away from the, um, the Quantic Dream of it all, because yeah. that man is a, because David Cage is a monster. Yep. So some Quantic Dream games that aren't developed by David Cage will look pretty good to them right now. Yeah, uh, to everybody. And to everybody, we saw uh, Fortnite uh, season three. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, it was season three is the wilds. The wilds, it's a jungle full of, full of Transformers and Optimus does, Prime actually, is there. No, let's show that, it's hold a, on. It's a jungle full of Transformers. <laughs> No, let's let's show this because actually this was very funny. We had a good time watching this trailer. I'm gonna get to like Fortnite's the end good. of it. Like I don't play Fortnite, but you can't argue that Fortnite's good. Like it just is. Yeah. So you can ride you can ride a dinosaur and Optimus Prime is there, but he's a little bitty Optimus Prime. Where, There's a big is? Optimus Prime. Here and, we go. And he makes a little Optimus Prime to he, run around with you. Yeah, he give him to you. He give him. He give you a Optimini Prime. I didn't know how much Fortnite has changed. I think the last time that I played Fortnite and maybe the only time that I played Fortnite, I tried it when it came out yeah. initially, like really like when it launched. Sure. And then I tried it again in 2020 when we were all locked inside and we had friends that were playing a lot. The, look the, at uh, Little Prime. The ancient Optimus Prime with the strange markings made a little baby Prime and now yeah. all the weapons transform into things and you're in a jungle and the jungle opened up uh, under the island. It's great. Optimini. Optimini Prime. And then at the end, it said chapter three, uh, season four, chapter three, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. it said, it said, no build. <laughs> they said, this one's a no, no build. build. Hey, olds, this one's a no build. We saw a uh, Path of Exile too. So if you like Diablo, but you don't like Blizzard, maybe you'd be interested in buying Path of Exile too. Which those are both things that are true for me. Um, we saw Witchfire. Sure, this is another one of those. Where we were like, oh, this is a video game. This looks like one video game. For a second, game. I thought this was Banishers in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but this is by the the team that made Bulletstorm. This is mm -hmm. like a boomer shooter, but like with, with, with spooky magics. There was a lot of boomer shooter with spooky magics. There was. Uh, Immortals of Avium was the other yeah. one, where they brought out um, Look, and look. This, like some of the abilities in this do look very fun. It doesn't like we're not shitting on this game. No, like it it does. As it somebody just... who was a fan of Heretic and Hexen mm -hmm. uh, back in the Doom days, uh, that that's a bit more of a shooter that I'd be interested in playing. I like any shooter that doesn't have a standard shooter look. Yeah. Um, the other one was Immortals of Avium, which like looks the same. This, it looks like the same damn game as the one we just showed you, mm -hmm. but it's a triple A one made by EA yeah. instead. And they brought out some. They brought out the main character actor guy, who was just the most CW. The most CW. The most I was supposed to be in a CW series, and I'm in this game. Mm -hmm. But maybe next year I'll get that CW series. Yeah. He just wanted to be at Coachella. Uh, we got yes, your grace. Yes, Your Grace, this is the second Yes, Your Grace. This mm -hmm. is Yes, Your Grace, um, I forget what it's called. Yes, Your Grace something. All it's labeled is as Yes, is as is Yes, Your Grace. Yeah, I know, but there's a, there's very a strange. longer title to it. Yeah. Well, we'll see it at the end. Uh, looked very fun. Yeah. I would not played the first one. This is lovely. It's kind of like a mix. At first when they showed this and they showed the art, I thought it was a new kingdom game. 
Yeah. Uh, but this looks great. It's a mix of uh, politics and adventure. And then- Snowfall. Uh, kind of like uh, just 2D battle. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Snowfall. Yes, Your Grace, Snowfall. Uh, looked fun to me. Looked like something I'd be interested in playing. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that was kind of, I, no. I mean, I mean. No. Oh, wait, you're right. No, the, I was saving it. You're right. This is the best there one. There are actually two, because there's also the big trailer. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll do that last. But Anthony and I had a disagreement on this one, on whether we've, or not we would be playing We've this. shown you this before. This is not new to you. No, this is a new trailer for Pal World. Pal World, of course, is Pokemon with guns and labor encampment. I don't know. It's <sighs> rough. It's a real rough looking game. The, I can't wait. I'm gonna play the shit out of this game. I can't believe how egregiously and closely the they Mareeps. were able to copy actual Pokemon. Those Flareons are are smelting ammunition. I can't wait. Like those are literally Pokemon. Oh, they're literally Pokemon. I don't know how they're getting away with this. You spent the half of this trailer, there's somebody flying on a Lugia. Like I genuinely couldn't tell you how they could get so close. Look at them. And they're, all the evolutions are there. Yeah. Which I love. This is so wild. Uh, so Anthony and I have been talking about this for a while and joking about it and enjoying joking about it for a while. But what I was surprised by is Anthony said he actually wants to play it. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to play it. It looks weird as hell. It looks weird as hell. The fact that this even exists and that they're they getting away, away with it, it the fact that they're getting away with it, I have to play it, I have to know. How? Especially, especially if this is a free to play game, I will absolutely be dipping into the PAL world. How? I uh, must. It says it's going into early access in January of 2024. Fucking unbelievable. Genuinely unbelievable. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. I don't know, man. Um, And then, let me find it, there's a million things in here. It looks like it uh, glorifies the worst of capitalism, extreme violence aside, says Cassidy Weaver. Yes, yes. this looks like a bad game. This looks like a game that was made by, by bad people. Yeah. I'm going to play the game. I'm going to give a Mareep a shotgun and that Mareep will use it on other Mareeps. The big trailer at the end of this was a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, we're getting the next installment of Final Fantasy VII. Um, yeah, it was weird. Keely, what, Keely said, that's right, the rumors are true <laughs> before he showed this trailer. And I was like, what rumors? That the sequel to the game is coming? Not what even rumor? like the sequel, like the, the next part of the unfinished game. Right, part two of the game? Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. We knew. We knew. The rumors are true. That's not a rumor. We we had been you knowing. You haven't released the whole game yet. We did been know that. Yeah, disc two, truly. It is a two disc release. That's the big thing. Everybody got really, really hyped when it said that it's coming out on two discs. Why is everyone hyped for it to be on two discs? I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a nostalgia thing. I think for a lot of people, Final Fantasy, the big deal is you opened it up and it was on three discs. And you were so like, was The Sims. And you were like, oh my gosh, this is the largest video game ever made. Mm -hmm. I think that's the big deal. I mean, the thing is, I think some people might be excited because it might mean less, less installation and download stuff. Uh -huh. But I think it means double installation and download. Yeah, that I think sounds like that to me. I think they're still gonna make you pre-install these discs. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The Sims, the first Sims was at least two discs. Um, they did say that it's coming early 2024 and that's all they would say. So I guess the big announcement was two discs. And that's, and that's what, and that's what, that's what mm -hmm. Keely meant when he said the rumors are true. Yeah. Two discs. Can yeah. you believe? Okay. Um, so that was everything at the main summer games fest show. Then we got day of the devs. And Day of the Devs was the one. I want to step in and uh, give a little breaking news that just happened this morning. Uh, Grasshopper. <laughs> this just in. 
Uh, Grasshopper Manufacturer, we, we mentioned that they had a weird, uh, strange countdown going mm -hmm, on on their mm -hmm, site. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, of course, Suda51 Studio. Grasshopper Manufacturer is holding its first ever Grasshopper Direct next week. Uh, and one thing that we know so far is that Shadows of the Damned, starring Garcia Hotspur, mm -hmm. and his talking motorcycle as they ride through hell to save his girlfriend. Um, it's getting a remaster. Cool. Shadows of the Damned is so good. Cool. I love Suda51. Uh, but let's talk about Day of the Devs. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. They're all back. Greg Rice, the tallest man with the longest hair in video games. Mm -hmm. Even though he's at PlayStation now, he's still a Double Fine guy at heart, and they still let him curate the Day of the Devs over at Double Fine, which I think is great. Yeah. Uh, and they put together an absolutely amazing lineup of games this year, um, starting with... Beastie Ball was the first yeah, one. Yeah, Beastie Ball was the first one. It looked very fun. Beastie Ball is the new game from Wishes Unlimited. They are the people that made uh, uh, Chicory. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg Lobanov, who has been an indie developer for years, uh, and I've, I've, I've known them for years. Uh, this is a game that was clearly made by kids. This is the anti-PAL world. Yes. This is a game that was made by kids who grew up playing Pokemon and said, I don't like that I mistreat the Pokemon. Yep. I don't want to put the Pokemon in a ball. I don't want to. I don't want to trade out my favorite Pokemon for a Pokemon that's stronger. Mm -hmm. I want to build a team of Pokemon that care about me, and I care about them, and they care about each other. Look, and our strength comes from our relationships. Do you want to talk about Pokemon Strat real quick? Because realistically, your starter is going to be your strongest Pokemon yeah, you almost to, every time. You have you to just keep the have starter. to stick with it. You have to keep your starter in your party. I. You don't need to keep no. swapping out and upgrading. Build a party. The rest of them, upgrade though. Upgrade a party. Build a balanced party, and you don't even have to swap out by different gyms. I don't know. I don't know. Depends. Depends I'm a on build if you want a party make... girly. I have, like, one to two rotation slots. Yeah. One to two well, rotation slots, but I build a party that rolls through. At, at some point, when your party is powerful enough, yo, I finish most Pokemon games, most gyms, with my one main starter that never goes oh, down. Oh, for sure. Like, it doesn't matter the type. I know you can strategize. You can be like, oh, this type's stronger against this type. No. But realistically- Here's the thing. In Scarlet- you your starter well enough, you never have to swap. In Scarlet, it was my Quaxley. My Quaxley went in and yeah. destroyed everybody. Yeah. But here's the thing. Pokemon games, obviously, if you wanna if you wanna speed them, if you wanna min max them, mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of like you get a new Pokemon. Oh, this one's slightly better. Trade it out. That's yeah. why I also never name Pokemon because I know I'm just gonna be trading them out. Um, wow. This I is name all my Pokemon but until this, I get copies. But this game is about beasties, not Pokemon, and mm -hmm. they play Beastie Ball, and Beastie Ball uh, basically volleyball. is like it's. This is turn-based. It looks like a volleyball game or a soccer game sometimes, depending on what they show. It's turn-based. It actually feels a bit like a, a Mega Man battle network almost. Mm -hmm. uh, but you pick beasties and you're rewarded for keeping them. Mm -hmm. And not just keeping them, but keeping them together. So if that build it and that a Spreco mm -hmm. stay together and play together, they will create a specific type of relationship which will either be friends, rivals, or sweethearts. Mm -hmm. And depending on that relationship, they unlock new moves together, different things strengthen up. Uh, they always follow you on the world map. They're never like in a ball or in yeah. a container. It's very much for they like- They call them besties. Yeah, they call them besties. So cute. Um, it's really for kids who are like, but I love my Pokemon. Yeah. Emotionally, I love my Pokemon. The next thing we got was Hyperlight Breaker. Uh, which is looking real good. Hyperlight Breaker's looking real, real good. Yeah. We, we got some good gameplay of that. Uh, they showed a little bit of the um, sort of the large environment that you're going to be in that's mm -hmm. full of different biomes. Yeah. Ooh, real good. Real uh, good. Next in there was Simpler Times, which looked very, very fun and soft. Uh, this is a game where you uh, go through somebody's room that they've mm -hmm. lived in their whole life uh, and uh, sort of find things about them. They say it's they say it's about this this person finding their core selves and rediscovering their core selves. It's you know it, it gives a lot of the same vibes. Unpacking does mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is music based. Uh, they show a lot of it moving to music. A lot of the um, voiceover that comes over is in an almost like spoken word format to the music that's playing in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, this looked beautiful. Yeah, um, made by. Uh, 
they said that made by it looks like a, I don't oh, want to assume thing. I don't want to assume anything, but it mm -hmm. looks like it was made by a, a, a couple or at least people who live together because they mm -hmm. talked about how the room uh, that's in the game is based on the room that they spent together during the uh, during the last few years is the way they put it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was obvious. This is obviously one of those. Um, Trapped in a pandemic with our emotions games. Yeah. And you get to play records and you get to yeah. cook things and you get to, I don't know, look at pictures and read books. Yeah. Kind of nice. Are you looking for one with video? Yeah. I have been trying yeah. and it's been really hard. Yeah. Uh, nobody wants to post the videos from Day of the Dev for some reason. Which is a bummer because Hyperlight looked really good in motion. Yeah. I'm just going to look up. I also, I want to show the Viewfinder trailer. Yeah. Because Viewfinder, Viewfinder has been, uh, in development for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but Viewfinder really just got uh, its sort of like big, big, what is this? This is the Viewfinder trailer. It's just another one. This is PlayStation's oh, version just, of it. And they're just rewinding it. Yeah. Um, that's a bummer. So- It was a good trailer. Viewfinder is, yeah, it has some super liminal vibes. It has some stuff like that. Um, but basically- Here we go. Okay, great. But basically, uh, anything that is printed matter, uh, starting with with photographs, but um, could be anything, when you put them up in the world and it matches to something in the world, mm -hmm. uh, it changes that world and opens a new pathway. This game's been in development for, I wanna say, six or seven years. We've showed the trailer here on the show before the last time that they did an update for it, um, but it looks better every time. This looks really, really cool, and it looks like, uh, I, I can't, Simply start to even wrap my brain around how complicated this must have been to make. Oh my gosh, the level design, but also when you look at some of the screenshots, mm -hmm. some stuff that wasn't shown off as much in the trailer, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at these screenshots, some of it is very much all of the worlds because you can hold up any art. Mm -hmm. So they start with photos, but then they get into like different styles of art and different styles of photo. And when you walk through them, you wind up in one of those worlds. Yeah. Uh, so it's really cool. They also show how you can rotate photos and you can like put them in sideways or upside down. Uh, it looks really, really amazing. And Wait, here, cat. we got to show the ribbon cat that follows Beautiful. you through all worlds. I love. Uh I love, uh, this was super exciting. I can't wait to play this. So there's a demo available now on PS5. The demo will be coming to Steam on June 19th. So you got 10 days for that. And the game itself comes out on July 18th. Very exciting. Uh, next was Haunty, which has a lovely art style. Mm -hmm. um, looks like a, like a twin stick shooter with some adventure elements. Looks really neat. Uh, and then an interesting announcement, Cart Life Remastered. Mm -hmm. Now Cart Life, came out in 2010. It won a bunch of IGF awards in 2013. This is a game where you play as one of three different people. You play as all of them eventually who are trying to start, uh, who are trying to build their lives being street vendors. Um, it is a very sad game. It is a very interesting game. It is a very sweet game. Mm -hmm. uh, and the single developer, the solo developer, sort of pulled it off every platform in 2014 and sort of disappeared. Why is that? We, Do we don't know? We don't know entirely. Interesting, um, interesting. But Ad Hoc Studio um, has been, you know, working with, uh, with Richard Hoffmeyer, I guess, for years, trying to get him to remake the game or mm -hmm. let them remake the game. Yeah. And it finally happened. And uh, I think it's gonna be great. If you haven't played it, I'm so excited that people will be able to play it. It's a it's a heart-wrenching and beautiful game. And it, a lot of stuff that we play these days is based heavily on cart life. I'm super excited to try it. Uh, the next one was one of my favorite things in the entire showcase. This is Hellskate. Hellskate, baby. Hell yeah, Hellskate. This looks awesome. You are literally, your name is Anton Eagle. Yes, it is. Your name is Anton Eagle. I love this. I love it. Uh, this The developers talked about how they also worked on Tony Hawk Underground, yeah. which is such an incredible Tony Hawk game, and I have so much like love and nostalgia for Underground. This is, uh, if you're familiar with Steve Swink, it's a Steve Swink joint, and Steve Swink was on Tony Hawk Underground. The man who created the word game feel mm. uh, is now working on an underground skate combat game where you're a one-winged angel who's got to grind on serpents and murder people with your hell sword. I'm going to play so much of this game. This is fantastic. Everyone in it is hot. 
You can be hot in it. Look at look at this. It has that real it has that real Y2K early internet vibe to it too in everything it does. And skater customization is fundamental to skate games. Yes. Like the way that you can customize yourself, the like outfits and tattoos, the customizing the board. They got that so right from this trailer of what people love about the like Tony Hawk games. Yes. And uh, mentioning underground is 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 name checking a particular thing, right? Because that means RPG elements, uh, quests, yes. different little things to yes. do. Um, it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild that it's happening. It's got that 2000s ugly core thing to it that I really love. Like just this pastel, like early internet ugly core. I am obsessed. I can't wait to play this. We got no date for it. We just got a wish list now for mm -hmm. right now. Um, doesn't say it's coming to console, just says Steam at the moment. Uh, um, I'm sure that they are in LA this week with everybody in the industry and trying to trying make those to get publisher into deals. Um, the next one is Henry Halfhead. Oh my God, Henry Halfhead. Was there any a trailer for this anywhere? Uh, I'm gonna pull it up. Yeah, look for Henry we Halfhead. We have to watch this. The Henry Halfhead is made by Lululu, is the name of the studio. Mm -hmm. And it's about someone who is half a head. Uh, also one of my favorite trailers from this, another one that I can't wait to play. Day of the Devs hit so much better for me personally than Anything the main showcase. you jump into as Henry Halfhead, you become. And that's how Henry Halfhead lives his lives their life, sorry. Yeah. Henry, they, they said in the trailer is they, them. Uh, Look at this. Look at Henry. Henry. And the, the narrator who you can't hear in this is doing the cutest stuff where it's like, sometimes it feels nice to stay in bed, but we'll regret it later. Henry got up and they went to they went to turn off the alarm clock and start their day. Look, Henry becomes the battery. Henry becomes the battery. It is a fun physics, uh, like puzzle solving game of uh, a very simple task. Henry needs to make the bed. Mm -hmm. Henry needs to pack their suitcase to go to work. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy that I noticed the first time I watched, but it's I'm really like focusing on here. Uh -huh. If you'll notice, there are no bounds to Henry's environment. Yeah. The bounds expand as the story expands. Uh huh. So there's the door as to the, the kitchen. The next thing needs to happen. Yeah. You become the door to open the door, and, and then, then a kitchen appears. It's time to take a bath. Oh, there. I mean, yeah, the bathroom appears. Take a soapy bath and dry yourself, Henry. I love this game, and I can't fucking wait to play this delightfully weird game. You become literally everything. You can jump into everything. I just watch trailers like this and I'm like, why are you showing me shoot man games? When this exists, this exists. what are you doing? We should be doing this. Nobody's done this. You and, know, and why are you showing me another game where me and my friends have to play a, pay a subscription fee to, to, drop loot, to drop loot and swing sword? I just, like this, in the same way that I'm like, hey, why are we using AI to write stories instead of pick trash out of the ocean? I'm like, why are we using video games to get more realistic guns instead of Harry Halfhead? When you have to dry off after the bath, you simply become the towel and you're dry. You know? Um, are there puzzle elements? Yeah, it looks like as you go further. So in the beginning here, they're just showing you all the different mm -hmm. things you can do with the mechanics, but it gives you tasks. So yeah. one of the tasks here was like, you gotta eat a healthy breakfast, you have to drink a nice beverage, mm -hmm. and you gotta figure out what's going on in the news. Yeah. So you'd have to figure out how to do that. Yeah, so like if you saw earlier when they were trying to figure out the like alarm clock thing, I think that is the like puzzle element is like become the alarm clock, oh, become the battery because I need to be able to roll to get right. to this other location. And turn off the alarm. Exactly. So it looks really cute. Uh, then the thing that's really big towards the end, do they show it? Um, this is I, the full trailer. I don't believe, yes, they do. Co-op. Two Henry half heads together. Oh my God. One is pins, one is bowling ball. One is knife, one is apple. Two Henry half heads. Oh, I got so much better. We again did not get a date. We've just got wish list on Steam now. I want a date so bad. It's gonna be so good. Henry half head, please. Please. Uh, I want to play it with my friend. Uh, this is him, this is my friend. Uh, and we're gonna play this together. We're gonna play it. Please. Um, the next one to show off was Cocoon. This is another mind bending, very Anthony game that yeah. I enjoyed the look of. Uh, basically in Cocoon, uh, every little orb that you see is a level. So you're carrying a level around 
and a you world. Ju- you jump in and out of the level and carry levels around to other levels to get yourself to find new levels within levels. Yeah, sometimes you have to use the little orb that you're carrying around to activate things um, in the map that need weight. Uh, so you can set that down and then jump into the world once it gets open. You're traveling around with these little world balls. World balls. You know. Uh, as the world balls. As the Copenhagen-based developer called it, uh, that Sage really loved with his accent, orbs. 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 You must carry the orbs. Um, it looks really, really good. Uh, I'm sorry that we can't initially find anything except through this launch Dude, trailer. nothing wants to show trailers. Everybody for the main Summer Games Fest is like, trailer, trailer, trailer. Uh, and then they get hit with these indie games, and they're like, mm, you can have a picture. Yeah. Um, so the next one was Ete, uh, which is a game where you paint. Uh, really this was fun. really cute. It reminded me a lot of, if you remember, a game called The Unfinished Swan or even something called, like a game that was called De Blob that was on Nintendo. Uh, But it's basically, you're in a gray, grayish world and by coloring things properly, you color in the world, but also unlock new parts of the world and terrifying children. children. (laughs) These children have no ankles and their faces are weird. Really freaky. Don't pay attention to that. Yeah. But things that you paint eventually, uh, and I don't know if we have screenshots of this, eventually become elements that you can use within paintings. Now that part was really fun. As you paint things, you get like a copy of it essentially. So when you make a painting, it's kind of like scrapbooking Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're they're like animated too. So they move within your paintings. And I thought that was very interesting. That looked fun to do. Yeah, and you can mix and match. Like it'll give you things that you need to make like a Mm -hmm. feeling for a painting yeah, or a time for a painting or an era. And so you take all the objects that you have Mm -hmm. and like one of them was like, it was like exciting and uh, historic and athletic. And they put together paintings of dinosaurs playing hockey together Mm -hmm. because they had previously painted like hockey goals and like toy dinosaurs and they put it together and the game like counted that and yeah. gave you a score for it. It was really, it was really Looks cool. really fun. The next yeah. up was uh, Eternites. Um, and now this one was a fun announcement. They like interrupted the showcase with one of the characters, almost like VTuber like mm-hmm. uh, to come in and do this. This is a, an action adventure dating game. Essentially what this looks like to me is this looks like somebody has their favorite parts of Persona and was like, these are the parts that matter. Yeah. And what it is, is it's action combat, but, you level up your relationships with the characters around you, and that causes your AI partners to be stronger and your character to be stronger. R2 to hold hands. Um, R2 to hold hands. R2 in the chats, everybody. Um, R2 to hold hands. Eternites looks great. We also got a, a game called Summerhill. Summerhill is a good game about sheep. Yeah, herding. Um, you have to You have to herd your sheep in this beautiful like gorgeous little world. Look at how, here's the sheep. Yeah. And it's just these gigantic, um, beautiful worlds. It's made by the people who made the Altos Adventure games for mobile, if mm-hmm. you've ever played those, uh, or Monument Valley. And uh, if you basically have to uh, herd these sheep into different areas and it's very, very chill and very calming. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start kind of moving through these because it's already 10.30, can Goodness. you believe it? Uh, next, we got Retro Gadgets. I think that was what it was called. Right? Yeah, so this is basically a game that teaches you how to solder and build gadgets and do uh, some light game programming. Really cool. Really, really cool. And you can, as somebody who builds and mods Game Boys and stuff, this is a very fun thing. Yeah. Uh, I watched this and I was like, oh, for Anthony's, uh, I understand. And, yeah, and then the next one I watched and I was like, oh, for oh, Sage's. Mars First Logistics, uh, I'm very excited about this. This is about building little devices to solve little puzzles. You need to pick up a thing and transport it. You need to build the proper device to do so. Uh, it's just like another one of those like little physics puzzle games. Yeah. I love a physics puzzle game. Now, the interesting thing about this is there are going to be story-based uh, deliveries that you have to do, but then there are going to be infinite procedurally generated tasks to finish. I love that. And one of the things that they showed was like, you can just build stuff to build stuff. They built a little man with, with pneumatic jumping legs, mm-hmm. and then they built a giant diving board and a pool. And his whole thing is he was a little robot that flexed and jumped. Yeah. It was very cute. Um, we also got the new game from Diguta Fabrique, mm-hmm. uh, the, the studio behind Mutazione and Sports Friends is called Salt Sea Chronicles. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful kind of hand-painted adventure game. 
Uh, it says, uh, heist their impounded ship and mount a rescue, guide the crew across the islands of the post-flood world known as Salt Sea, uh, explore strange and wonderful communities, choose where to go and which crew members to investigate with, and chart a journey through twists and turns, difficults and delights. Beautiful. One of the things that's interesting about this is they call it uh, they call it the adventure game uh, removal of the walk, and shame, walk of shame system. Yeah. If you miss a clue or an object and you realize that you missed it, instead of having to walk all the way back across the game map to get it. Fast travel all the way. Fast travel to anywhere you've been. Go to the point, uh, go to the point that is relevant to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really nice. Uh, and Daguda Fabric I always love because all of their stuff is very socially conscious and environmentally conscious because Doug and Hannah are just those kind of people. Awesome. Um, so it's lovely to see from them. Uh, and that's that's the biggest stuff. I, I do want to announce some real breaking news. <laughs> this yes, is some, Anthony. This is some real breaking news. Bennett Foddy is back. Bennett Foddy is back, and he's back with Devolver, uh, along with Maxi Bach and Game Kuzilu. Uh, this is Baby Steps. Uh, if you're familiar with Quop, or of course, Getting Over It, Bennett's last game, uh, this game is very much like that. This is called the world's first literal walking simulator. You play a 35 year old man that lives with his parents and doesn't do anything during the day. Mm -hmm. And the biggest challenge is just to get up and do something, anything, literally anything. And so he gets pulled into a game world and you can hear his parents like arguing about him upstairs. He gets pulled into this game world and literally doesn't even know how to move. Uh -huh. And his whole thing is just physically modeled walking that you control completely. All you have to do is walk. Just put one foot in front of the other, you loser. <laughs> Shy Town said, did they make a depression video game? Yes. Y yes, and it's funny. You play video games like I do. All video games are depression video games. Can you can you navigate these steps, idiot? <laughs> no, you cannot. Careful. Can you sidestep on this cliff, you sure moron? Can't. No, you can't. Uh-oh, this is a little slippery. What are you gonna do, bud? Fall. Fall. <laughs> Oh God, the noises. The noises. Oh God, the noises. Uh, uh, that looks very, very fun and silly. Yeah. I like it. There's a bit where he knocks over a cairn and we can't play the sound, but there's a bit where he knocks over a cairn and somebody pops up from behind. He's like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> That's not cool. He's like, sorry, I didn't mean to. He's like, you didn't mean, but you did. Shit. That, like, I don't know, this <laughs> might be too depressing. I fucking love it. I love it, but also damn. Oh, uh, Summer Games Fest is good actually. Yeah, this has been great. Uh, this is the kickoff, of course. This is just getting started. This is gonna be all month long, so it's a big video game month. Uh, on Monday, we will have quite a few more showcases to recap. Yes, including- Our favorite. Toyotathon. Toyotathon. <laughs> <laughs> Showing off all the new Toyotes. <laughs> Which Toyota is your favorite Toyota? You have to collect and trade Toyotes with your friends. Yeah, I heard that the next Toyota is going to be $69.99 instead of $59.99, and I don't know about that. I don't know about I it. I want a digital Toyota. I want a I want water type Toyota to fight against all of the other Toyotes. You know, I heard that if you just really were committed to building a bond with your Toyota, you wouldn't have to swap out your Toyotes. I mean, you gotta give your Toyota a name. The problem is you haven't been naming your Toyota. It depends on what you're into it for. Are you into a relationship with your Toyota? Yes. Or, are you, are you, or do you just want to min-max and beat the game? I think you can do both. I think that you can be effective through compassion. I'm gonna name my Toyota Pri Pri. At least you're finally naming one. I'm doing it because you asked me to. Pri Pri. Like or, or, or Camilla. Toyota Camilla. <laughs> Hey, if you're a patron, there's a few more minutes of this dumb bullshit coming your way. So, Not about Toyotes, probably. Maybe about Toyotes. I hate how coherent this conversation <laughs> is. Hard same. Uh, all right, we're going to wrap it up here. But before we go, thank you so much to everybody who supported us during today's show. We are an independent network and you make what we do possible. We're also independent people and you make us live impossible. So don't forget, we run a donation bar here through the entire month. This is literally all the money that we take home for doing this show. Um, 
is cool of you and we appreciate it. And that's the best way to support uh, your hosts directly uh, Mm -hmm. because that goes directly to the people that you see on camera. Um, And then there's other things that you can do, like support the Patreon, of course. That helps to running the studio, your subscriptions. Uh, You can do things for free, like join the Discord. A lot of water. Not sparkles. Uh, you can do things for free, like join the Discord, or tell a friend about a show, tweet when the show is going live. We always appreciate that so much. It is a great way to help maybe a friend who didn't know that they would love this show find out that they probably are gonna love They're this gonna show. Love it. They're probably uh, gonna love it. Thank you to Flatlander. Thank you very much to Jeremiah for tweeting out about the show today. You're awesome, and we appreciate you so very much. We're gonna go through, and we are going to thank everyone who directly supported us during the show today. But first, Anthony, what are you about? Pal world. Mostly. No, I wish you wouldn't be. Uh, mostly about Pal World. I hate that you are. But also, um, I'm also in. I'm here on the, on the internet. Yeah. I'm like here on the internet Come at on. A Carboni, yeah. and then also uh, Anthony Carboni on Twitch, and then tonight on Failsafe. Yeah. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at not sage. You can also find me, uh, here all of the time, including tonight for failed save. Uh, very curious I to see how I didn't ask. You- what is this, Simon Says Outros? Including on Failed Save tonight, where we get to see what unfolds after last week's uh, hardship and chaos. Vince described, this one should be pluckier after that, after what we just went through. So He always says that, and then it's not pluckier. Who could say? And then on Sunday for the finale of In the Name of... <laughs>